What I'd like to do in this video is to formally define what we mean by a walk in a graph, a trail, and a path. So let's start by beginning with the definition of a walk. So a walk in a graph G is a sequence So the sequence looks like this. The walk is defined to be a sequence vertex V0, then an edge E1, then a vertex V1, then an edge V2, E2, vertex V2, and continue like this until we get to vertex K minus 1, edge K, and vertex K. So, so these terms, whose terms alternate between vertices and edges, so we can see that first we start with a vertex, then an edge, then a vertex, then an edge, and notice that these are not necessarily distinct. such that, so they alternate such that V I minus 1, so vertex I minus 1, vertex I is the edge, the edge E I. And this is for 1 less than or equal to I less than or equal to L. Okay, so if we think of an example, let's take this graph right here. And I'm going to label this as V0, V1, V2, V3. And let's put some edges. Here's some edges. Let's make it the complete graph on four vertices. And I'm going to use a pink to label the edges. I'll just label them as A, B, C, D. And then the one that goes from V0 to V2, that'll be E and the one that goes from V1 to V3, that'll be F. Okay, so an example walk. Here, let's take a look at an example. Maybe we start at, here's our walk, and we're going to start at vertex V1, and then we use edge B, and notice B is the edge V1, V2. So we end up at V2. And then maybe we use edge E, and that takes us to V0. And then maybe we go along edge A, and that brings us to vertex V1. And maybe we use edge B again, which brings us to V2. And then maybe we use edge C, which brings us to V3. Well, this is a walk in the graph. And in fact, when the graph is simple, when G is simple, we may write the walk by indicating the vertices only. vertices only. And that makes sense because if you look at this walk, if I just told you V1 then V2, you know you had to have traversed via the edge B because there are no multiple or parallel edges in a simple graph. So we could write this walk again. This walk would be vertex V1, vertex V2, vertex V0, vertex V1, vertex V2, and vertex V3. So we go along like this, V1, V2, V0, V1, V2, V3, and that's a walk. Notice that there were repeated edges. For example, B was repeated right here. It was used here, and it was used here. And there were also some repeated um, vertices. For one of them was V2. That was repeated. 
and I think V1 was also repeated there. So notice that I specified these are not necessarily distinct for it to be a walk. So that's the definition of a walk, and the length of a walk, the length of a walk is the number of edges of the walk. Okay, so now what is a trail? Maybe you haven't heard the word trail before. A trail is a walk such that all of the edges are distinct. So, it doesn't say anything about vertices. You might hit the same vertex again, but you do know that the edges are distinct. So let's take a look at an example again. Maybe we'll take our same example. So I'll just draw this quickly. Okay, and this is V0, V1, V2, V3. This was A, B, C, D. This one was E and F. Wait, let me get that right. Well, it doesn't really matter. In this case, this one will be E and this one will be F. I'm not sure if that's how I had it before. But anyways, here's an example of a trail. Let's go ahead and find a trail. Maybe we want to denote this trail by T. And we will start at vertex V1 again. And if we use edge B, we don't even need to specify it now because we know that we have a simple graph, so we don't need to worry about what is the edge that you take from V1 to V2 it is the only edge, B. So okay, we go along that edge, we cannot use that edge again. Maybe now we go to V0, and then we go to V1. Okay, now we're back at V1, and we cannot use edge B again because we've already used it, so maybe we go to V3. So this is a trail because no um, no edge was repeated even though there was a repeated vertex. The repeated vertex was vertex V1 right here and here. Alright, now let's take a look at the idea of a path. A path is a walk such that all of the vertices and edges are distinct. Okay, so now we can take a look in this same picture as above and define a path. If we wanted to go from, say, let's go from V1 to V3 again, but if we want to go from V1 to V2, now, we cannot go back to V1, of course we cannot use that edge again, but maybe let's say we go first to V0. Now, we cannot choose to go back to V1 because it's already been used once in our path, and so maybe we're going to go to V3 directly. So here we are, V3. And so here's an example of a path. And we were using before this notation with this square brackets to denote this path. So that's the thing to keep in mind, that a path has no repeated vertices and no repeated edges. And a path is in fact a trail, but not all trails are paths because trails could have repeated vertices even though they have no repeated edges. And then the most general one is that of a walk, which can have repeated vertices and edges. And in all of these examples, the length is the number of edges. So the length of a trail is also the number of edges, and the length of a path is also the number of edges. And there's one more quick definition. We say that a walk is closed if, now remember what a walk was, it was a sequence of vertices, so we started at a vertex V0 and we ended at a vertex VK, and in fact we often call this the initial vertex, this V0, and this one the terminal vertex, and all the other vertices are called um, internal vertices, that sort of is intuitive. So a walk is closed if the initial 
and terminal vertices are identified. Identified. So in other words, V0 is VK. You start and end at the same place. That means that the walk is closed. And so if you have a path where the only vertices that, remember, in a path you cannot have identified vertices. You have distinct vertices. But if the only vertex that's the same as another one is the, is the start and the end, then you end up with a cycle. So we've already seen cycles before, and we can really think of them as closed paths. That would make a cycle. And then there's one more tiny piece of notation. It, maybe we want to call this initial vertex x and this terminal vertex y. And if there is a walk from x to y, if there is a walk from x to y, we may write, we may call it an xy walk. And similarly, we might call it an xy path if the walk is indeed a path. And sometimes there's another notation. Another notation could be like this. We would write x with an arrow to y to denote that we have some sort of a walk, but often in the example above, maybe I'll just scroll back up to that to remind you of the example above, when we defined a walk, we had the vertices and the edges alternating, but we can easily see that this example had k edges in it. This, this definition. So in general, a walk of length k would be represented by this arrow between x and y with a k on top. So this notation means a walk of length k, k edges. And maybe if there is a walk but you don't know its length, so then you could do something like this with a star. Sometimes this notation is used. This just means a walk from x to y. But you don't know the length. That's why there's a little star. So hopefully all this notation is clear and you understand the difference between a walk, a trail, and a path.